Yes, people, it's Matt, a.k.a. the Doc in the Arena, the guy that will give you those medical takes on sporting topics. Now, today, I can't not talk about it. I can't not talk about it. These collapses in football are unusual. In the last week, we've had three reported collapses either during matches or in training. I think we've had Adama Traore in the Champions League. We've also had Chris White and John Fleck, I believe. If you add Sergio Aguero to the mix and a gentleman in Iceland who suffered a cardiac arrest on the pitch, we've had five in the last month that have made headlines. What in the world is going on? What's going on here? Well, Professor Guido Pieles from the Institute of Sports and Exercise Health in London, has commented to the mail, given his opinions. So what I want to do, I want to go through what he said, and I can give you my opinion and elaborate on it going from there. Before I dive into the video, as I always say, if you like the video, actually hit like because it helps the channel loads. Subscribe and ping the notification and just jump in the comments. Always really enjoyable and jump on the Discord as well while you're at it. Other than that, let's rock and roll up. Right, so this is what the professor, the professor of cardiology, has said about recent collapses in football. At present, I would say this is still a coincidence. I don't think we can say this is suddenly increasing. I don't think it's increasing, particularly in football. Footballers are certainly not the athletes that have the highest volume and intensity of training. Endurance runners, Tour de France cyclists and rowers, they train much longer hours. So this is a specialist speaking. And he's chosen his words very, very carefully. Don't think it's just a cop out him saying, oh, it's a coincidence. Okay, listen to what he said. Okay, and I'll explain to you three reasons why one might say it's a coincidence before anything else. Number one, listen to the wording. At present, I would say this is still a coincidence. He is a professor. He is a scientist. He has produced many research papers. And therefore, what he believes in is the scientific method, right? What that involves basically is simply this. You observe something. Oh, okay. A equals B normally. Oh, I notice anytime this happens, something else tends to follow. Okay. You notice it. From then, you then create a hypothesis, a theory as to what might be the case. You then try and perform some sort of research, do some sort of test to try and prove your theory and make sure that can be proven reproducibly. And once you've done that, you can then say you've proved your theory. Until then, it's just a coincidence. Until then, it's just a theory. And he has to take a scientific approach to these things and not overreact. And that's why he's telling people not to panic. Now, why does it seem, though? Why does it seem that this is more than a coincidence? Because I will say myself, I think it's a little bit strange. Five in the last month. A couple of things. Number one, reporting bias. Now, I'm not using the word bias in the traditional sense, but in the sense that some things become hot topics. Like in sports, I've seen it before, concussion becomes a hot topic and then it's always in the news for a period of time, goes away for a bit, something else, and then it comes back. And with Sergio Aguero, with Christian Eriksen, massive, massive names in football having issues with their heart, this has brought this issue under a microscope. And as a result of that, it's going to be reported on in more detail and more often. That's that's how it works. That's how the news works. And I thought building on that, it was interesting in, in the second part of his quote, endurance runners, Tour de France cyclists, rowers, they train much longer hours, put much more strain on their heart and their lungs than footballers. And I'm sure within those ranks, they've got athletes that suffer from burning in their chest during training or feeling palpitations or fe- having funny feelings that are investigated appropriately and they're treated appropriately, but d- that do not make the headlines because it's not high level football in fact I'm, I'm sure in football I'm sure in football in the lower leagues in the conference in the non-league in the non-leaguers in university football there are people that have sort of similar issues to this and they will never make the news so if that haven't been said it's important to distinguish the frequency of reporting from the, re- the frequency of what is actually happening and that's just natural that's not me saying the media has an agenda that's just how it is and we have to keep our head about it and be scientific in our approach The other thing I wanted to mention to you is, listen, this stuff is being reported as a collapse, okay? But you need to remember that that is a very broad brush. So, 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 if we include the last month, these five issues, there's two ways to see it, okay? You could either see it as one thing, one issue happening five times, or five issues happening once. If you have watched my previous video, I've given at least five different reasons why Aguero might have had these heart issues. It could have been a virus, could have been dehydration, could have been underlying medical conditions, could have been uh, cardiomyopathies, 
could have been something he was born with, etc, etc, etc. And you've got to bear that in mind with these individuals. It could just be completely different things, completely unrelated things. And that's actually quite likely. So again, that's why it's probably more of a coincidence than you think. And I encourage you to just try and think of things on multiple different levels and basically just think, you know, it could be X, but it could be Y. With that having been said, I have not seen this frequency of headlines in a while. So it does beg the question, what if it's not a coincidence? What could it be? Well, as I said, we don't know yet, and that's okay. If in six months, a year, two years, we find out it's all connected in some way, that's the scientific process at work. We're figuring it out. I'm going to jump in now and say a lot of people are saying, is it the vaccine? Is it the vaccine? Again, I don't know. I don't know, okay? But what I would say is that it's much, much more likely to be related to the COVID-19 infection itself than the COVID-19 vaccine. And that has been shown in numerous studies. And as I said, I've mentioned it in previous videos before, so I won't go into detail. So just think of it that way. The infection more likely to cause a problem than the vaccine. And remember, and remember, there's other stuff too. There's things we don't know that happens behind the scenes. What if we find out in six months, there's a new supplement going around using professional sport that everyone thinks great at the time. But in six months, a year, two years, five years, we realize, actually, no, you know what? It contains too much of X ingredient or too much of Y ingredient and affecting, and affecting athletes' hearts. We don't know. We literally do not know at this moment in time. But I'm just saying it could be more than the vaccine, more than COVID, and it could be a coincidence. So there's a, there's a lot to consider. That's all I'm saying. I am keeping an eye out on these cases. I think Aguero, there's rumors that he might retire. I'll keep a very close eye on that story. And if we get more information about... Um, Wyke about um, Fleck about um, Triore. I will let you guys know. Or only thing I do know is that um, Charlie Wyke was unvaccinated, so the collapse was not due to the vaccine. That's the only thing I do know because the club released a statement. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Comment, get involved, and I will see you on the next one.